Okay, so if we are doing matrix multiplication, then one thing we want to make sure and point out is the idea of what an identity matrix is. So identity matrices. Um, identity matrices are basically when we, and we're thinking about multiplicative identity, um, the idea that I have a matrix I can multiply another matrix by, and I get the same thing, right? So if I take a matrix and I multiply it by an identity matrix, and we usually call those capital I, so we don't want to use capital I to denote any other matrix other than an identity matrix. So the idea with an identity matrix is if I take a matrix and multiply it by an identity matrix, I should get the original matrix I started with. Okay, that's multiplicative identity we have with real numbers is the number one, right? The idea that if I take one times any number, I get the same number, right? So same with an identity matrix here, okay? Now what you'll notice from matrix multiplication before is that, um, you know, we could multiply this matrix A on the right or the left by an identity matrix. Um, so just think about if we have some sort of an M by N, that's the size of our matrix A. So think about what our identity matrix would need to be on the right side. Well, it would need to match this here so that these match. But then we still want it to come out M by N because we started with an M by N matrix. So this would actually be N by N. Okay, so that will give us matrix A, and that will still be M by N, what we started with. Um, if we are multiplying by identity on the left side, and think about what we would need. We would need the, the second, we would need the number of columns here to match the number of rows here, so we'd actually need an M there for these to match. Um, and this would actually need to be M to make this stay M by N. So what you'll notice here is, you know, if we multiply a matrix by something on the right or the left, the, the, the size of the identity matrix may not be the same. Okay, um, these are going to be real easy to do, though. Uh, they're super easy to remember. Um, the idea with an identity matrix, um, it does depend on the size of A. So when we talk about a matrix A times an identity, um, we are just going to, we're generally assumed that we're going to be using the appropriate size when we see something like this, okay? Um, so the idea with an identity matrix is that identity matrix, an identity matrix is going to be a square matrix, and it's going to have um, entries of one on the main diagonal of the matrix, what we think of as the top left to bottom right diagonal, and it's going to have zeros everywhere else zeros for all other entries. Okay, so if we, let's do, you know, some examples here. So if we have, uh, let's say, uh, matrix A is equal to, let's do something like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So this is, if you count two rows, three columns, so this is two by three. So if I want to do A times I and have an identity matrix, then what we'll really need is we'll need three rows there, right? So three columns here, three rows, A times I. So my identity matrix here is going to look like, simply we'll have One's on the main diagonal, it'll be 3 by 3, so it'll be square, and there are going to be zeros in every other entry. Okay, and what you might sort of see, hopefully, if I just kind of work this out a little bit, if I try to do matrix A times matrix I, think about what we're doing and why this is going to give us the same matrix we start with. Um, we're taking the dot product of the rows of A times the columns of I. Right, so what you'll notice with the zeros here, in the first one, uh, the only value that we get that's non-zero when we do the dot product is when this 5 hits the 1, right? Everything else will be zero. And so when we do this first spot, right, what we're getting is 5, but nothing else is being contributed in the dot product. And then when we do the first row times the second column, 
for the next piece of it, right? Think about the only thing that is non-zero is going to be when the 10 and the 1 multiply each other, right? So everything else will be 0, so we should just get 10 for the next one. And then when this row is a dot product with that one, we're only having the 15 times 1. Everything else is 0. And so we are systematically only including certain values, right, as we go along. And then you can see when we do it with the next one, I won't do it with the entire way, but when you do it with this one, and we do the first column here, the 20 is what actually multiplies the 1, and everything else gets hit by a 0 there, right? And so we end up getting this kind of a thing, and that, of course, is what we started with, right? This is matrix A itself. So A times this identity matrix where we have ones on the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else, we get the same thing that we started with. If we did a, a similar thing where we, let me give you a, a you know, a matrix uh, that's a little bit different here. So if we did something like matrix B is something like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, right? and I want to multiply by an identity matrix, well, let's think about if this is 3 by 2 here, then I would need this to match the 2, so my identity is going to be a 2 by 2 identity matrix, right? So my identity would be just 1s in 2 rows and 2 columns and zeros everywhere else, so that when I do the row here times the column here and do that dot product, we have the the number of things that line up, right? So B times our identity matrix should just be matrix B when we do this multiplication. Okay, um, and so then I guess w another thing to note here is think about if you have a square matrix. So let's say if we have a matrix C um, and let's say it's a square matrix, right? So same number of rows and columns. It could be, could be two by two, it could be three by three. Right, so let's just uh, let's just say it's three by three. Okay, so think about um, if we put before or after a matrix I, um, and matrix I also needs to be square. So if, if I multiply by an identity matrix on the right side, so right multiplication by an identity, it would need to match this. So I would need a three in the front, and of course identity matrices are square, so the other dimension would also be three. Um, if we did the same thing but multiplied on the left, so left I left multiplication by an identity matrix. If this is 3 by 3, then this would need to match this number. And then because identity matrices are square, this would also need to be 3. So what you, what you notice is if you have a square matrix, um, the size of the identity matrix that you'll use on either side, multiplying on the left side or on the right side of that matrix, matrix will be the exact same size, right? This is the same size. Okay, but when you see, you know, matrix times an identity, just make sure that you are using an appropriate size for your identity when you do that. All right, and then the sort of the last uh, basic arithmetic operation thing that I want to talk about um, in this video, and then I'll do a separate video on determinants and all of the, the things that go on with determinants for this week. Um, I want to talk about the transpose of a matrix, make sure that we're okay with that. This is a pretty similar, um, you know, it's similarly simple, I think, with a lot of the stuff that we're doing this week with like, you know, adding matrices is pretty easy. A lot of the stuff you could probably figure it out without even much explanation. Uh, for transpose of a matrix, that just simply means that we uh, we swap the rows and the columns. Okay, so the columns of a matrix become the rows, and the rows become the columns. So, uh, you know, if I have a matrix A, and it is the matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, written in, here you can see, three rows and two columns. Just be careful, you know, don't go too fast and get turned around here. Okay, so if we were going to swap these and make the rows the columns and the columns rows, and the way we denote a transpose, it looks like a power of T. Um, usually you'll see this A transpose. There are other ways that people write this, but for our course, we're going to go ahead and use 
A with what looks like a power of T. So this is the transpose of A. Transpose of A. And so think about what happens here. If 1, 2 is the first row here, then it needs to become the first column of the transpose. And the second row is 3, 4, so that becomes the second column. And the third row becomes the third column. Okay, so whether you go down this one and say 1, 2 becomes a, a column, 3, 4 becomes a column, 5, 6 becomes a column, do it that way. Or you think of, well, 1, 3, 5 is a column here, so 1, 3, 5 is a row here. You can do it either way. So that is probably not too difficult, I think. Right, so if we, um, you know, let's take a, a bigger matrix. If I take matrix uh, B and let's say it's, you know, 4, 1, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 6, 9, trying to just keep unique entries, 0, 5. And so if I want to do the transpose of B, so B transpose is how some people will say that sometimes. So think about the, uh, you know, the 4, 3, 9, which is the first column, becomes the first row. So 4, 3, 9 is the first row. Uh, 1, negative 1, 0, it's the second column, becomes the second row. So 1, negative 1, 0, and then negative 2, 6, 5, that's the last column, so it becomes the last row, negative 2, 6, 5. Okay, so what you'll notice, uh, you know, with A and A transpose, this was 3 by 2, so this becomes what? 2 by 3, of course, right? Because the rows and the columns swap. Here, with you know, B is a square matrix, right? So if B is a square matrix and it's 3 by 3, well, when we swap the rows and columns, of course, the number in each one doesn't change, right? So the the B transpose is still a square matrix here. Um, what, what you might notice when you have a, a square matrix, I guess, um, this main diagonal here, I don't want it to make it look like I'm doing some sort of a, a word search, but the main diagonal here, you'll notice when we swap, um, that doesn't change, right? I have the 4, negative 1, 5. What you'll kind of notice with a square matrix and the, and the transpose, the 3 and the 1 are swapping across the main diagonal here. Right, the 9 and the negative 2 are swapping. So anything that's not on the main diagonal in the matrix here, the 0 and the 6 swap, right? Um, you can kind of see, it almost looks like a reflection, right, of all of the entries across the main diagonal. That, that's true with, a, obviously, just a square matrix, right? Up here, that, that doesn't really happen because we get entirely different size of matrix. But with a square matrix, that is a thing. Um, I guess also maybe one note here is if I take the transpose of a matrix, of course, and then if I were to take the transpose again, right, so take the transpose of this 1, 3, 5, 2, 4, 6, of course, 1, 3, 5 goes back to being a column, uh, 2, 4, 6 goes back to being a column. So if you take the transpose of a transpose, we should get back the original matrix that we start with, right? Hopefully that's pretty obvious there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop there for this video. That is most of the uh, basic arithmetic and operations. The other video for this week is going to talk about determinants, doing a little bit more with those, making sure that we're good with those, and uh, doing uh, larger ones and, and small ones, and some as big as your head. And all right, check out the other video. Talk to you later.